Hi, and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. We're going to do something a little different in this video. Uh, we're going to do a little review with the financial calculator. This is really a scenario that I built up for my uh, CFP uh, certification core curriculum students. And uh, I've got a little bit of artificiality here, which I'll talk about, but we're going to use the financial calculator here. Uh, and then I'm going to show you a different tool, but we're going to start with the financial calculator to uh, figure out how Cassie, our client in this scenario, uh, will uh, use the snowball method of debt repayment to uh, pay down her debts. And here's what we see then. We have, and let's lock that snowball method in. Uh, so what we know is that with this uh, line of credit, we've got $12,000 at 7.5%. So a couple things we know about lines of credit that will be useful for us is that they have monthly interest calculations. So your interest on a line of credit is based on the average daily balance over a month long period. And in this case, we'll assume uh, 7.5% interest, $12,000 balance outstanding at the time Cassie brings us this problem. And the interest on this thing would simply be then $12,000 times 7.5% uh, divided by 12. And that is uh, $75. You can do that math uh, on your calculator. We should be probably using the calculator since it's the whole purpose of this thing. So let's. Uh, Bring that guy up. We're going to just zoom in here. We're going to use the calculator. At least in theory, we're going to use the calculator in its larger version. Not what I want. Sorry, zoom out, I guess. Um, and we're going to do let's clear our calculator and 12,000 uh, times 7.5% and divided by 12. This should give us uh, $75. Uh, some of you who are quicker at math will have done that math mentally. That's a little shortcut you can do. You can just do order of operations differently. You can do 12,000 divided by 12 is 1,000 times 7.5%, but whatever. Uh, for, and sorry, we know that $75 then, that's also the minimum payment for a line of credit. Lines of credit use uh, their interest as the minimum payment. So basically with a line of credit, you can maintain it at that 7.5% forever and ever uh, if you're willing to pay that $75 a month for perpetuity. Uh, then for the MasterCard, uh, the monthly interest here, we can do this first. The monthly interest is not the same uh, here, the monthly interest on this thing would be, or sorry, not the same as the minimum payment here, it'd be 5,500 uh, times 20.9%. And then we can also do that divided by 12. And that would give us the monthly interest that we're accruing. And again, if we just pop over the calculator, that is uh, $5,500 times 20.9%. Uh, divided by 12. So new interest accruing on this thing would be uh, $95.79. But the minimum payment for credit cards is done differently. Now I've made a little bit of an assumption here just to make our lives a little bit easier, uh, but this is actually probably not the reality. I'll show you this in a second. The minimum payment is going to be set by the credit card company. Um, and I'll show you how that gets set in a moment. But for now, we'll just use my assumption from the case study. And we'll just do times 5%. And that minimum payment would be then, and again, just back to the calculator. So 5,500 times 0.05 or 5% if you want. And that's a $275 minimum monthly payment. The reality is that probably the minimum payment is based on either uh, one or one and a half percent 
of the uh, balance outstanding or the other thing that we see here is something like this, where we're going to take 1% uh, of any new balance, uh, plus we're going to take uh, 1 12th of any annual fee. So you'd have to know the annual fee for the card, uh, plus any interest charges for that month. So for example, in this case, uh, if we're calculating a more realistic minimum payment, if we wanted to uh, figure this thing out, you do 1% of any new purchases that month. So let's say for the sake of argument that uh, Cassie bought uh, whatever $400 worth of stuff this month times 1%, that would be $40 you would add into that minimum payment, uh, 1 12th of the annual fee. And let's say for the sake of argument, we have a, an $80 annual fee. And so you would take 1 12th of that, just 80 then divided by 12, and that's going to give you uh, $6.70, we'll call it. Oh, sorry, $6.70. And then, or 6.66 you want or 667 whatever we'll do that properly um, and then any new interest charges and we just figured that out at 95.79 so her annual fee or sorry her uh, minimum payment would actually be uh, a little bit lower here but that's okay I'm again we're just doing this shorthand and I'm not too fussy on the details because the details will vary so much from circumstance to circumstance but just to show you that there is a way to calculate this so that annual fee is $142 and, or sorry, that uh, minimum monthly payment, I apologize, in reality is gonna be $142.46. Uh, uh, that would be the real amount. If we knew a little bit more information, that would be a little bit easier to calculate, but there you go. And I think most people will just count on their credit card company to tell them what their monthly fee is, but whatever. Uh, and then, sorry, what their monthly minimum is, I apologize. And then for the uh, Capital One card, and uh, one of my favorite little bits of information here, if you ever see a Capital One card on a credit report, if you see it on an Equifax or TransUnion report, the actual uh, shorthand they use is uh, this. Um, I always think of what a famous gangster when I see that. No comment on Capital One at all. Um, so then the uh, monthly interest here, sorry, the monthly minimum, according to what we're doing here, and let me just fix this. Yeah, that's good, I've got it. Monthly uh, minimum here using what we have is $7,800 times 4% uh, using the information that I've provided in the case study. And so again, we can do 7,800 times 0 0.04, and that's gonna be $312. So we have for our three cards, or for our three credit facilities, we have our uh, minimum payments calculated now, and I'm just going to throw those up on the screen here beside us beside our information, so $75, uh, $275, and uh, $312. And now we'll get rid of everything that we have down below here. And now the uh, snowball method, we're going to use the snowball method here. Um, Snowball method is where you're going to take the smallest debt and you're going to uh, pay that one off first, and then you're going to graduate to the next debt, next debt, next debt. So the uh, smallest debt here is our MasterCard, which is uh, $5,500 at 20.9%. So what we have to figure out then is we know Cassie has this uh, $1,000. Uh, if we know that, and she's going to then move uh, $75, she's gonna make her minimum payments on her cards. You can't get away from that or on her facility. So 
we know she's going to shuffle $75 over to that line of credit and she's going to shuffle $312 over to the uh, Capital One card. And this would be uh, our snowball method at work, paying off the MasterCard first and then paying off the uh, Capital One card. So that's uh, 300, well, we can just do it on the calculator over here. Why not? We've got this thing. So we'll do $1,000 uh, minus $75 minus uh, $312. And we can see that then she's got $613 available to put towards this uh, MasterCard. Now, you might prefer to pay off the Capital One card first, given the higher interest rate. And mathematically, that's certainly going to be the better thing to do. Uh, depending on the line of credit, it might even be better to consolidate everything onto the line of credit. But there is a fair bit of evidence that shows that if people uh, use the snowball method, uh, they are more likely to achieve success. That, uh, that idea that you can get little wins uh, helps. I don't always subscribe to that. And this is where you definitely have to know your client. Uh, even when we see sort of rules of thumb like that, or when we see evidence support that, that generally points to about 60 to 75% of people who prefer that method. Uh, that does mean there is a significant portion of the population that actually doesn't do better with uh, Snowball. So you can't say, well, 100% of people are going to do better with Snowball. Um, and actually, I'm a big fan of starting somebody off with Snowball for the first maybe three or four months. And then once we achieve some success, if we if that person understands what's, what's happening, uh, I think it's useful to then consider a switch over to uh, the avalanche method, which is to pay off the uh, largest debt, or sorry, the uh, most expensive debt first. So, but anyways, we're going to use Snowball here for the whole thing. Now, there's a little bit of artificiality here. Uh, the line of credit, yeah, that'll stay the same. But the Capital One debt, this amount will reduce over time. And this isn't easy to do in the financial calculator. The financial calculator, we could play around with this and really uh, crank a lot of data into the financial calculator and get this to work for us. But practically, uh, the financial calculator is not a great instrument for this problem. So we're going to use uh, $312, even though what would actually happen here is if you paid $312, because that's more than the interest you accrue in that month, uh, your balance actually is going to start coming down. So if we were looking at this in reality, that's what would be happening to the balance. And as that balance comes down, uh, so does the minimum monthly payment. The minimum monthly payment is always based on the balance. So this isn't a perfect representation. And again, I'll show you a tool a little bit later on here that uh, does this uh, for me, that will work through this problem for me. Uh, nevertheless, here's what we're uh, going to see. So we start off by paying off the smaller balance here, the MasterCard. And for those that have done uh, the financial calculator with me, uh, we're just going to draw a line. And here's what I know on the line. I know that we're paying $613 a month. I know that the interest rate is 20.9%. Uh, I know that we're trying to solve to get our uh, future value to zero. And I know that the current balance is $5,500. And we're going to try to solve for N, figure out how many events would be happening here. So we can do, uh, we can clear our calculator, and then we can set our PY and our CY, our times PY, our present value, our payment, our future value. We're going to solve this all on end mode. There's no requirement to switch to begin here. And my uh, PY 
and CY will both be 12. We're paying monthly and credit cards compound monthly uh, times PY. We're going to be solving for N. IY is going to be 20.9%. Uh, present value is going to be uh, $5,500. Our payment is a negative. That money's going away from Cassie as she pays down that card. And future value here will be zero. And then we can pop over to the calculator and do that whole thing. We'll clear our calculator and we'll set our PY here. So PY at 12 and that defaults then. My CY is also 12. Get out of that little menu and we'll do 20.9 as our IY and then 5,500 as our present value and then 613 negative. You want to set that as a negative as your payment and zero as your future value. And then we're going to uh, compute for N and we can see this uh, first debt then is going to be paid off in 9.84 months. Now, I'm not a big fan of uh, 9.84 months here. I don't think that that's uh, terribly realistic. Let's just round that off to 10 months. You're not going to sort of take, you get an extra whatever it is, $30 at the end of that period and you shuffle that over the other card. Most likely, you're just going to uh, add that amount on. So we know that's 10 months. That's uh, going to be a useful bit of information. I think I can plug that in up here. Well, maybe not quite. We'll just make a space for it up here. 10 months for our uh, MasterCard. So that takes care of that one. Uh, now, we're going to do the same thing, uh, but this time for the Capital One card. Now, the Capital One card's a little bit trickier here because what would have happened is with the Capital One card, we started that balance off at $7,800. We have been paying $312 on that card, $312. And given the $312 we've been paying, our balance now is going to be something less than 7100 or sorry, than the $7,800. So you gotta figure out what the balance is after 10 months here, based on a 29.9% rate. And now we want to solve for future value. That's going to be our starting point. Once we've got the MasterCard paid down, this is how much is left owing on the Capital One card, just based on that somewhat artificial minimum payment uh, for that time. Oh, I think I messed up here. I think I did everything at uh, uh, 4% of balance. Just give me a second here. Sorry, I thought I made a mistake there, but uh, I didn't. So I guess I did make a mistake, but not when I thought I did. <laughs> All right. Um, our, uh, so for the calculator now, we're going to set uh, PY and CY both to 12 again, just like we're used to. I'm going to do things a little bit differently. Those who have done the financial calculator with me, I'm going to do something I hardly ever do. I'm actually going to set my N to 10. That's going to be the easiest thing here. It's going to be a fraction of a year. And I don't have to worry about times PY here. I just want to tell the calculator, give me 10 months. I could have done this differently, but that's how I'm going to run it. And then my uh, IY, that's 29.9. My present value is 7,800. Payment at negative 312. And our future value, that's what we're trying to compute. And now I can pop over to the calculator and clear everything and again i bring up my I clear my calculator and bring up my py and cy menu so those are both 12 that's good that's what i want and then i i could do times py but i'd have to convert n into a fraction of a year so i could do uh, five divided by six or ten divided by 12 into my n spot but i'm just going to do 10 months so that I know PY is 12, that means I'm working in monthly, 10 months, that's N equals 10. It's not something I normally do, but here it works out nicely. I'm gonna do then 29.9 as my interest rate. I'm gonna do 7,800 
as my uh, present value, 312 negative as my payment, and then we're going to compute our future value. So we've paid this thing down a little bit. We now have a balance of not uh, 7,800, but really uh, 6,482. And if you want to use the 43 cents here, why not? That's going to be my uh, present value. And now I'm going to uh, figure this out. I'm going to say, okay, now I want to solve, I want to get my future value down to zero. And how do I do that? Well, I know that I now have more than $613 available. I only have $75 going to the line of credit. So really, uh, 1,000 minus 75, everything else out of that is available. That's $925. That's what's available to uh, deal with this guy. So $925 here. And now we're going to solve for N. And we'll figure out how long it takes to chip that debt away. So my uh, PY here is going to be 12 and CY 12 again, just like we've always done. Uh, my times PY, that's what we're going to end up solving for. Uh, IY at 29.9. Present value is 64.82.43. Payment at 9.25. That's a negative. That's going away and future value at uh, zero. And now I can, what I'm actually going to do here, I'm gonna pop over to my calculator and instead of clearing everything, I'm actually just gonna make that future value right now a negative and I'm gonna plug that right into the present value spot. And now I don't wanna clear my calculator um, I've really just taken that piece of information from the last calculation and moved it into the new calculation. And now I'm going to uh, bring up my uh, PY menu, just sure those are set to 12. They are, I can quit out of here. I'm not ready to do N just yet. I'll put in my IY at 29.9 and then my payment at 925. Uh, negative, and that's going to go into the uh, payment spot, and then my future value at zero, and I want to compute N, and we say, all right, 7.8 months, or we'll round that off to uh, eight months. So once we've started paying down the uh, Capital One card, after paying down the MasterCard for 10 months, uh, that's going to be uh, eight more months to pay that off. And this is where I like to say, you know, does this actually uh, make sense? Does my math check out here or did I mess something up? And this is where I might just say real quick here, what's uh, eight times uh, $925? Is that really enough to have paid down that 6482? I wanna make sure that I didn't make a, a math error somewhere. So I'm gonna do eight times 925. I know there's gonna be a little bit of interest here. I say, yeah, that sounds about right that we paid over that uh, eight months. We paid $7,400 in payments in total versus a $6,400 balance. Yeah, that seems about right, about $1,000 in interest there. And uh, the rest of it would have gone to principal. So now we're uh, 10 months for the MasterCard, eight more months for the Capital One card. And now it's just a matter of figuring out what's gonna happen with the uh, line of credit. And the line of credit is going to be a little bit easier than what we had to do with uh, either of the last two calculations. Because for the line of credit, I don't have to worry about calculating a balance now after this time has passed and I have the full 
thousand dollars available here. So the line of credit, I know we were only paying interest that the seven and a half percent that we were paying on this thing was all interest payments, uh, no principal. So no matter how much time has passed, there's still a $12,000 balance outstanding when we start to chip away at the line of credit. A 7.5 interest rate here, and, and again, a line of credit compounds monthly, and we're paying monthly, so $1,000 a month. And now I can just go through and plug all that in. PY and CY are both 12 uh, times PY is going to be what we're going to solve for here. We're solving for N, uh, IY at seven and a half, present value uh, 12,000, payment is negative 1,000, future value is zero, and that uh, wraps us up. So we can work through that calculation, which is just much more easily than what we had to do for the other debts. And so we'll just clear the calculator here, and we will... Uh, bring up our PYCY, perfect. Those are both set to 12. We'll quit out of there. And then we'll go to interest here, 7.5 into IY, uh, 12,000 into our present value spot, 1,000. And I'm sure you can appreciate that you, sh you should get something just over uh, 12 months here, right? It's uh, $12,000, $1,000 a month, $1,000 of payment and zero future value, and now let's compute N, and there we go, 12 and a half months, say at a relatively low interest rate, that probably makes a lot of sense, and we are 12.5 uh, months then, or we'll round it off to 13 months. So using the financial calculator, I got uh, 13 months here. Uh, in total then, that would be 33 months, sorry, 31 months. I apologize, 31 months, that's 18 plus 13. Uh, 31 months to have everything uh, paid off. And uh, for the sake of argument then, if you want to just uh, math that out, I am recording this video in uh, June of 2019. And so we would say, perfect, that takes us through all the way until that would be, uh, if I'm not mistaken, January of 2022. That would be uh, 31 months away. Okay. So I hope that's useful for a financial calculator review. Uh, like I said, I want to show you a different tool here that you might get a little more uh, fidelity with. I did uh, mention that there was some artificiality in that method. So this is the uh, tool that I wanted to give props to. Uh, this is a tool called undet.it. It's uh, free to set up an account here, although it's like a lot of things, it's a freemium model. So you can, uh, if you click on some of the, see the new features over here, you click on some of these features over here, it'll take you to, uh, if you wanna do that, you gotta buy a paid model. But what I did in Undet, I just created a free account and I entered in uh, these three debts. It gives you a lot of opportunity to customize. And I said, I wanna choose uh, Snowball. Again, you can play around with this with Undead IT. And I wanna give props as well. It's actually uh, Ian McCullough right here. And uh, Ian is a financial advisor. He's based in Calgary. He really does a lot of work in uh, the area, kind of uh, Northwest of Calgary, Cochrane area primarily, um, but, uh, Ian does a lot of work with clients who have uh, debt issues, and uh, he was the one who actually introduced me to, I, to undebt.it, so pretty slick tool. And you can see it came up with a very similar conclusion. It's a little more accurate. So we had calculated that we would be debt-free in uh, January of 2022. Uh, but because Undead IT does a better job of reallocating payments, so remember I showed you that with the uh, Capital One card, while I'm paying off the MasterCard, my minimum payment is gonna be coming down. So as that minimum payment comes down, that means that you can actually increase the amount that's uh, going to, so every dollar that comes off here, that increases the dollar going to the MasterCard. 
And that's where we shaved a couple months off with that higher degree of fidelity. Uh, so this is a, a really good tool for a sort of real life uh, scenario. And I would suggest if you do have a client who has a, uh, a debt issue like this, not a bad idea to use undebt.it to figure this out. Now, I have in real life dealt with folks who are in positions like this, and we've done it just on a piece of paper, uh, not even really doing any fancy math. And I've seen that be uh, successful. I think it's helpful for people to visualize how long it is until a debt gets paid off. Uh, in this particular case, you know, you've got somebody who has what might feel to them like an insurmountable problem. You say, look, if you just go with the plan here, that first credit card, it's going to be paid off a year from now. That's not that long. And a lot of times when people see that kind of thing, they say, yeah, okay, I get it. I can actually, uh, I can manage this. And you can see the cost of doing things here, projected interest. You can see when you're going to be free and clear. Um, I think for people who have a debt problem, these often feel like problems that are way outside of their control. I think the biggest message you get with a tool like on debt.it is that you actually do have uh, some control over how you uh, work yourself out of debt here. I, I hope that's been helpful. Uh, certainly not meant as a plug for this tool, but I, uh, I, I do like the tool and I'm sure there are other uh, similar tools out there. This is the one that I happen to be aware of. Uh, please enjoy your continued studies and thanks very much for joining us.